Will used to be an average person in modern-day Japan dealing with the stress of the modern world and leading an unfulfilling life. One day, he was suddenly transported to an alternate world where, as soon as he opened his eyes, he saw a bunch of demons, and he started crying, thinking that he was in hell. He slowly realized that he had been transferred into the body of a baby and at first couldn't even understand the language that the demons spoke. Several months pass by and he finally understands their language a bit, but regardless of everything, he is still a tiny baby who has the brain of a high schooler. He understands and learns things much faster than an average child, and he realizes that the demons are taking excellent care of him. But he still thinks that he must be in hell, until one day, one of the female demons named Mary takes him outside of the place they lived in, and as soon as he sees the world, his eyes tear up. The outside world is completely beautiful, and it seems more like heaven than hell. He thinks that it must be a grace of God that he was transported here, maybe a sign from God telling him to start over and have a fulfilling life. All three of the demons who take care of him are undead. One of them is a skeleton named Blood, one of them is a ghost named Gus, and the third one, who is the mother figure for him, is Mary. Gus teaches him how to cast magic spells as he used to be a genius and was the best wizard anyone has ever seen. He is stern with Will but also appreciates his effort and claims that Will himself seems to be a genius and will probably do excellent magic going forward if he keeps practicing. Blood is an excellent fighter and practices with Will every single day so that he can develop into an all-round excellent person with no weaknesses. He trains him with a sword and makes sure that his muscle development is optimal at all times. He also teaches Will that sometimes they have to kill living organisms, whether they are humans or animals, and it is not because they enjoy doing it, they have to do it because it is necessary. He then takes Will to a forest for a hunt, and they hunt sparrows together. Will is able to catch the sparrow easily enough, but he has a hard time dealing the final blow and killing it. Blood calls him from behind and tells him that the more indecisive he is, the more pain the birds will have to suffer. So the best option is always to deal a killing blow as swiftly and smoothly as possible to avoid any kind of pain to the animal. Finally, one day, Blood tells Will that he has gotten strong enough that he doesn't have to hold back everything and tells him to get ready. Gus tells Will to get ready as Blood is faster than he looks and before Will can even reply, Blood slashes at him. But thankfully, Will is able to dodge his attack just in time. Blood follows up but Will uses his acceleration spell and zips away from him at an incredible speed, but Blood still gives chase. Will creates a puddle on the way which Blood slips on and falls over and before he could get up, Will used his falling spiderweb spell to try and bind him. But Blood was able to slash through the net and disarm Will with a single blow. Mary teaches Will how to deal with everyday problems and makes sure that if he ever gets lost anywhere alone, he will always have a way to survive any situation. On the day after coming from training, Will is told that Mary is again in the temple, praying to the Earth Goddess. His curiosity gets the better of him, and he peeks through the door, only to see Marie on fire. He runs towards her, screaming and grabs her, trying to pull her out of the flames before shouting for help. His arms start burning and suddenly he falls unconscious. He wakes up in his room with all three of the undead present. Marie starts crying with joy and curses herself for not paying attention, but Will tells her to chill out before telling her that he just got curious as to what she does. Marie looks at Will and sadly exclaims that all three of them used to be humans before, but they died, and sadly, their souls still clung to their mortal bodies, creating a very strong pact that led them to turn undead. When you become undead, you go against the rules of God and basically make them your enemy. So whenever Marie tries to pray to God, she gets enveloped in fire, and yet, she's been praying to God every day non-stop forever since she can remember her life. Five years have passed since that incident occurred, and now Will is 13 years old. He has been praying to the gods non-stop and has been able to meditate in front of them for three days straight without needing any rest or food. His lessons with Gus have been getting progressively harder, but he tries to learn them all nonetheless, and the more he is able to learn, the more intense the lessons get. He sometimes believes that Gus wants to wear him down, so he tells him that he can't do it anymore after being fed up with learning, but Will refuses to do so. Blood trains Will every single day and finally one day he brings Will to the grounds and tells him that today he will be fighting an actual undead demon and not him. Will gets a little anxious but decides to stand his ground and agrees to the duel. Blood releases the undead and Will takes his sword out. They both run at each other and strike, but Will is able to dodge the opponent's attack while landing a perfect blow to his body defeating the demon in an instant. Blood is very surprised at this and even Will cannot believe his eyes. He is overjoyed with his first actual combat and asks Blood if he did well. Blood thinks for a bit and tells him that he thinks Will is ready for the real experience. He then takes Will with him to the abandoned city and explains to him that several decades ago, this city used to be a flourishing area with tons of people around in a very economically stable environment. Then one day disaster struck and the entire population was wiped out and now this is a ghost town where every single person has been converted into an undead and haunts the dungeons. 
He takes Will inside a dungeon and walks deep inside before he tells him that he will be leaving the dungeon and will be waiting outside for him, and before Will can say anything, Blood simply disappears after snuffing out the light. Will suddenly feels like a kid again and feels very lost. He then sits down and drinks water while eating some jerky, and thinks about how he has never been alone in this life as he always had either Blood or Mary with him at all times. But in his previous life in Japan, he spent all of his life alone. He feels very cold and lonely, but he sucks it up and proceeds forward, planning to escape as soon as possible. While walking, however, he spots a bigger and stronger undead skeleton holding a spear in his hands. He gets scared for a moment and thinks whether he should fight with him or simply find an alternate way to avoid him. But he thinks to himself, what would Blood have done? After that, he realizes that Blood would never run away from his problems and walks out in front of the undead, getting ready to fight. He takes out his sword and runs towards the demon, slashing away at it. But the demon is able to dodge his attack. He realizes that this demon is neither as strong nor as fast as blood, so he has nothing to worry about, but he is surprised to see that the undead tries to cast a spell on him, but will uses his instincts perfectly and immediately casts nullifying magic, completely breaking his spell, before running towards the demon. The demon tries to attack him, but he dodges his attack and hits the demon on the head, breaking his sword in the process. He gets scared when he realizes that he has no weapon to fight this demon now, but thankfully, the demon crumbles right in front of him. He walks towards him and grabs the spear that was lying down. As soon as he picks it up, he realizes that it is not just a normal spear. It was handcrafted by the dwarves with their special magic, which means this is a very strong magical weapon. He walks ahead and finally realizes that he feels a draught flowing through the tunnels and believes that there must be an exit somewhere near, but he turns around to see a dark figure, shrouded in shadows. He gets ready to fight but feels relieved once he sees that the dark figure is Gus himself. He asks Gus what he is doing here and whether Blood sent him here, but Gus is completely quiet and is plainly staring at Will. He gets a chill down his neck and feels that something is really off. He asks Gus whether this is a lesson of some sort, but without any warning, Gus simply creates a stone golem right in front of him that attacks him. The golem attacks Will, but he is quick on his toes and backs off immediately before stabbing the golem in the torso, killing it in one hit with the help of his magical spear. Suddenly, a stone comes flying at him and gets embedded in the wall behind him, and he notices that there are more where that came from. He dodges all of them and runs away as fast as possible. Gus uses the spider web spell on him, but he is able to use his nullifying magic just in time to cancel it. To his surprise, however, Gus had also already made the floor greasy with his magic, which led to him falling down. Will quickly gets up and dodges another flurry of stones aimed at him before he starts running again. He keeps running as Gus starts casting multiple spells at once, which is extremely difficult and Will now can't simply nullify all of his spells at once and is forced to keep running while trying to dodge his deadly attacks. He trips over and falls down only to look up and see that Gus is preparing for another giant flurry of rocks to be hurled in his direction. Will starts to panic thinking that this is not the way he wants to die, especially when he was given a second chance on life by someone he considers his dear teacher. He closes his eyes and decides that he is not ready to die yet and if it comes to it, he will kill Gus. He gets up and starts running in his direction with extreme quickness before thrusting his spear towards him, only to stop a couple of inches away from his body. His hands start trembling and he drops his spear, asking Gus why he wants to kill me. He tells him that he considered Gus his grandfather and just wants to know the reason why he wants Will dead. He looks up at him and tells him that if he really wants to kill him, then Will is ready to accept his death because he can never hurt Gus no matter what and he starts tearing up uncontrollably. Gus looks at Will and suddenly sounds all cheery saying that he thinks he took this lesson so far and telling Will that he did really well. Will is relieved that Gus doesn't want to kill him, but at the same time he knows that it wasn't a lesson and that Gus is definitely hiding something. Gus escorts him outside of the dungeon, and they both go back to their home where Will decides to keep what happened between him and Gus a secret from Mary and Blood. Blood and Mary are both very happy for Will as they examine the spear and realize it is a dwarf-made spear imbued with magic. The spear can emit light on command and can shorten or expand itself for ease of carrying as well. Will now starts regularly going to the Dunagans, where he is now able to deal with all of the monsters, even the stronger ones, fairly easily and collect scraps of armor whenever he can. Surprisingly, Gus has reduced his workload by almost nothing, as he thinks Will has already learned more than enough. He then calls Will to his chambers at night and tells him that he is going to turn 14 years of age soon, which means he will no longer be a boy but a man. He tells him that soon before that, Blood will probably challenge him to an earnest duel. Will tells him that he did expect Blood to do it, Gus tells him that he has a favor to ask of him and then tells Will to lose the duel against Blood in such a way that Blood shouldn't realize it was intentional. Will is shocked and asks Gus why he wants him to do that, but Gus tells him that it is a secret that he cannot share with him. Will gets pissed at this and tells him that you have always kept secrets, and if you cannot reveal the reason, then I cannot help you. He then moves out of the room in a huff before saying a word. 
The next couple of days were spent training his body to its limits before finally the Day of Judgment arrived. Mary helped Bull wear his armor for the battle, and they both proceeded to the ground. Blood is already sitting on a rock, waiting for him, and asks him if he is ready before explaining the rules to him. Will agrees to the rules, and they both draw their swords out. Will lunges at Blood to attack, but Blood is able to dodge his attack very skillfully before retaliating the flurry of fast attacks that Will is only able to try and block. Blood lands a powerful blow, but Will is able to block it successfully with his shield before backing out. Blood chases Will down and starts attacking him again, while Will has no other option other than to simply try to defend himself from the constant barrage of attacks that Blood is trying to land on him with the help of his shield. Will backs off once again and Blood taunts him, asking him whether he forgot how to fight, trying to aggravate Will so that he makes more mistakes. Will, however, clears his mind and throws a small dagger at Blood, which he is able to dodge successfully. However, Will uses that momentary distraction to run up at Blood and try to attack him, but Blood is quick on his feet and quickly blocks his attack while pushing him back, telling him that these tactics won't work against him. Will goes in for another all-out attack, rushing straight at Blood who thinks that Will has no strategy and is desperate to win now. Blood lifts his sword and brings it down at him, but Will uses his shield to deflect the sword. It's a boost to jump up and stabs Blood in the chest, making him fall backwards. He asks Blood to yield, but to his surprise, Blood uses his ribs to grab the sword and jam it before throwing Will away and taking out another sword and pointing it at him, forcing him to accept defeat. Mary quickly runs towards Will, asking him whether he was okay, and shouts at Blood that he promised her that he wouldn't try this move ever again. Will looks surprised and asks him if he ever did it before, and she tells him that once, when they were humans, Blood was in a fight and the other person was extremely skilled. Blood didn't have any more tricks up his sleeve to turn around the fight, so he simply let the enemy stab him in the chest, then used his muscles to jam the sword, and the fight was over. Afterwards, however, he was bleeding so much that she thought he was going to die but was able to save him through her special grace. Blood laughs about it and tells her that now he cannot die so she doesn't have to worry about it. They all sit down and start talking with each other where Blood congratulates Will on even coming that close to defeating him in the fight and acknowledges his strength and skills. He tells him that Will is not as tall, broad, or filled with muscles as Blood was, so his fighting style should have been different. He tells Will that he never wanted Will to copy his fighting style as it doesn't suit perfectly with the type of body that he has, but still, Will was able to hone it to its utmost limit. He tells Will that he has taught him almost everything he could and has nothing else he can teach him anymore. He then produces a purple-colored sword, which he calls one of the strongest demon blades. He hands it over to Will, telling him that he earned it, even though Will retorts by saying he didn't even win. Blood still hands it over to Will, telling him that it is a mark of his independence before telling him about its properties. He explains to Will that it is one of the strongest demon blades which even the gods fear. One of the most important things about this blade is that whenever an enemy is hurt by it, the user of this blade regenerates health. Will is astonished at this revelation as he has never heard of anything like this before. Blood tells Will that this is a slippery slope, however, and Will should use the sword very sparingly, as it makes the wielder feel extremely powerful, as if the wielder keeps swinging the sword, no matter what, he will probably be the last man standing, regardless of his skills. Blood explains that many times people fall prey to its power as they stop working on themselves and start to depend completely on the sword, which is a very dangerous thing, as the sword absorbs the spirit of the person and stunts his growth. Will realizes the powers and complications of using this sword and tells Blood that he will be careful with it. Blood gets up, walks towards the edge of the cliff and starts telling Will about the history of the destroyed city. He explains that a long time ago, all the demon kings banded together to attack the entire kingdom, and among them was a demon king who was now known as the High King. He was an extremely vile and ruthless demon who used to own the demon blade that Blood gave to Will. He tells Will that the continent got overrun by the demons, and all hopes seemed to be lost. This all happened because the High King had a secret ability. He could create demons with his blood and high-ranking demon generals with his flesh. This meant that he had no shortage of demons for his army, and paired with the demon sword, he was unstoppable. According to Blood, the Demon King would run into the battle headfirst and start swinging his sword, cutting anyone and everyone who came into his path without defending himself and letting himself get cut so he could bleed and create more soldiers for himself. Paired with the Demon Blade, he was able to heal himself constantly while creating thousands of new soldiers all the time. This led to him defeating all the allied forces and being crowned the sole king for the entire continent. After that, bloodshed started in full force. Humans were getting killed in villages. They were being sacrificed to dark gods, and everyone thought that humanity was about to be destroyed. One day, however, Gus, the sacred mage, arrived in the kingdom and told everyone that now was the best time to strike the High King down. He paired himself up with Blood, the ultimate warrior, and Mary, the beautiful maid with the grace of healing people completely. 
He created a plan according to which he, Mary, Blood, and some of his elite warriors would enter the city of the High King at night through a sewer. They will make their way to his palace and engage him in combat. Gus will try to hold him in place and Blood will enter a duel with him, while Mary will keep healing everyone, including the Demon King, so he cannot bleed and produce new demons. Gus will then steal his sword, making him lose his trump card, and then it will be easier for them to simply defeat him. Blood, however, looks at the ground and reveals that their plan failed. Will seem surprised, but Blood reveals that everything was going according to plan, but when they reached the High King, he transformed into a giant demon, and he was such an incredible swordsman that Blood wasn't even able to lay a finger on him. All of his warrior friends died, and if it wasn't for Mary, he would have died as well. Will asked him, how were they able to defeat him at last? Because he must have been defeated, as Will has his sword right now. Blood reveals that the god of stagnation, who wants the world to be free of life and death, descended on land and told Mary, Blood, and Gus that if they sacrifice themselves to him, he will help them seal the High King and eradicate all the demons as well. So without a second thought, all three of them agreed to sacrifice themselves. Blood became a skeleton, Gus became a ghost, and Mary became a mummy. The god kept his promise and eradicated all of the demons, but instead of killing them, he simply converted everyone to undead demons, which means that they will never die nor reproduce, bringing the world to stagnation. According to Blood, the three of them are the highest-ranking undeads and have been guarding the seal for more than 200 years. One day, a bunch of demons brought a human baby into the temple to try and sacrifice it to one of the dark gods. They were surprised by the human kid, as they thought that no human was left on the planet, but right in front of them was a human baby. Gus wanted to leave the baby alone in the woods, as it is not their job to do anything about it, but Mary and Blood both outvoted him and decided to keep the baby and raise it as their own. This was the reason that they never told Will anything before because they couldn't bring themselves to tell him that he was meant to be a sacrifice. Mary gets up and hugs Will, telling him that she will always love him and even Blood tells him that he was the best pupil anyone could have asked for. Will is very confused because both of them sound like they are saying their final goodbyes but suddenly, dark clouds start circling around him and a giant shadowy figure emerges from the sky, asking Blood and Mary whether they have said their farewells and lost attachment to the kid, to which they give their affirmations. Will suddenly feels powerless and falls to the ground when the deity tells both of them to place their souls in his hand. Before they could do anything, however, Gus arrived in the middle, breaking the entire ground in half and telling Will to take both Mary and Blood away while he dealt with it. Gus stands strong in front of the three of them, while Stagnate tells him that he is nothing but a mage and does not have the power to defeat a powerful deity like him. Gus simply looks at him and tells him that he is not going to let him take the souls of both Blood and Mary without a fight. Stagnate simply laughs at him and tells him that Gus is going to regret this heavily, but without another word, Gus throws a bunch of spells at him, which Will is shocked by, as the mana he is putting in each spell is insane. Stagnate is easily able to nullify them, so Gus uses three spells at once, but Stagnate simply creates a barrier around him to protect him from the magic while telling Gus that all that he is doing is completely useless. Gus, however, starts throwing even more complex spells by somehow using four spells at a time, which even surprises Stagnate, who struggles to nullify all of them at once. A huge explosion takes place and Stagnate disappears. Gus walks towards Will and tells him that everything is fine, he can relax, and there is nothing to worry about. Will is still completely shaken but is happy that all of them are safe. But before he could say anything, Gus makes a terrible sound and gets split in half, falling down on the floor. Will is horrified to see that Stagnate emerges from behind them, mocking Gus for thinking that he could defeat Stagnate that easily. He then proceeds to use his magic on both Blood and Mary, and they both fall over on the ground completely lifeless. Stagnate walks towards Will and tells him to join his ranks as if he does so he can live with all three of them forever, but if he doesn't, he will have to pay very dearly. He replies that all three of them were his ultimate undeads, who were supposed to make sure everything remained stagnant on Earth, but because of Will, both Mary and Blood forgot that order and even Gus became a little soft. He tells Will like he has until the evening to decide what he wants to do and disappears again. Will is heartbroken and confused as to what he should do. He carries all three of them inside and realizes that Gus tried to tell Blood and Mary not to adopt the kid because he knew it would be against the evil god, and he tried to kill Will in the dungeon because he wanted to save both of his friends, but he must have been conflicted and ended up sparing Will's life. Then he told Will to lose the fight on purpose, as that would mean that he would have to stay with them for a longer time, keeping the world at a stagnant pace, but nothing went his way, and he ended up facing off against the deity. He sleeps beside them and wakes up to find all three of them staring up at him. They act all nonchalant, as if nothing has happened, but Will tells them that he has memories of a previous life in which he was just another useless loser who was nothing but a disappointment for his parents. Sounds like me. He then tells the three that he is extremely sorry for what they had to go through for his sake, 
but he is not worth it. He is still the same worthless loser who will never be able to amount to anything. Mary looks at him and slaps the crap out of him. She tells him that if he says another bad word about himself, she will actually beat him up. This knocks some sense into him, and he gets up and simply says that he will protect them all before going to pray. He comes out of the temple and starts walking to the battlefield, where he is confronted by Stagnate. He asks Will about his answer and tells him to choose carefully, as it will determine what happens to all of them. He looks Stagnate straight in the eye and tells him that you will not make any kind of pact with him, and that he will defeat him at any cost. He then taunts Stagnate, telling him not to run away from a human child, which enrages Stagnate who uses his magic to create a bunch of undead demons who were sealed below the ground a long time ago, and instructs them to attack Will. The demons surround him and start closing in on him, but he is able to destroy a bunch of them with his spear, uses his magic spells to bind some of them, and then uses his acceleration magic to speed himself up, immediately killing an entire horde of undead demons that were closing in on him, completely surprising the evil god Stagnate. Stagnate uses his magic spell to cut Will on his hand and his legs and instructs the demons to start closing in on Will, who still stands up straight and prepares to battle it out with them. Stagnate, however, stops the demons in their tracks and walks up to Will, telling him that he is very impressed by his strength, skills, and tenacity. He tells Will that he wants headstrong people like him in the army, as he wants to make sure that no one has to feel the horror of losing someone they loved. He also tries to sway Will by telling him that he will make him a general in his army, and that he will be able to stay with Mary, Blood, and Gus forever, living a life full of luxury. Will seems to be getting confused as to what his next step must be. Stagnate goes one step further and uses a small blade to cut himself before pouring his blood into a glass and offering it to him. To everyone's surprise, Will starts walking towards the evil god, looking intently at the glass, which can give him eternal life and a life of luxury, but suddenly he grabs the demon blade and uses it to chop Stagnate's arm off. His wounds start healing, which surprises even Stagnate, and he swings his sword two more times, slashing at his torso and injuring him, but before he could attack him a third time, his legs are suddenly bound by a snake, which creeps up on him from behind and bites him. Will tries to get up, but he falls unconscious. He wakes up in a heavenly place that is very calm and serene. He looks around and feels like he has been here before, but he cannot put his finger on where. He then turns around to see a beautiful woman walk in front of him, and he suddenly realizes that when he was transferred to this world, he walked along with this beautiful woman under this starry sky before being born in this world. The woman asks him whether he has made a decision about what he wants to do, and he replies that he has. He tells her that he has lived a life where he wasn't happy and was a disappointment to everyone around him, and he doesn't want that to happen again. He wants to be of some help and wants to protect Gus, Blood, and Mary. She looks at him and asks him whether he is willing to accept the fact that one day he will die in this world, and he looks at her and accepts it before telling her that he knows the true nature of life, and that without death, life becomes meaningless. The woman looks at him and tells him that if that is the case, then she is willing to happily give him her grace. She tells him to wake up, make an oath, and walk alongside her forever. He suddenly wakes up on the battlefield and quickly removes the snake from him while Stagnate laughs at him. He suddenly falls down on his knees in a small prayer and says an oath to the goddess of light, Gracefield, a beautiful woman who brought him into this world. Stagnate laughs at him, not knowing what he is doing, but suddenly realizes that he has created a pact with the goddess of light as Will's body is set ablaze in blue flames. He grabs his sword and claims that he is going to give his entire life for the goddess of life and eradicate all the dark forces of the world. Stagnate orders his forces to kill the boy, but as soon as they try to attack him, he simply uses the special grace that he received from the goddess to defeat the entire horde in an instant. He then looks towards Stagnate and uses his acceleration spell to quickly close in the distance, but Stagnate quickly jumps up and uses a dust spell to disappear in it. Will is on guard but is unable to feel the presence when he realizes that Stagnate must have gone back to the temple to harm Blood and Mary. Will quickly uses his acceleration spell and rushes towards the temple. He enters the temple to witness Stagnate facing off against Blood, who is covering Mary. William uses his acceleration magic again, but Stagnate is too close to them, and Will knows that he won't be able to reach him in time. He feels sad while he still tries hopelessly to reach him. Suddenly, however, a bright light shines and the goddess of Earth shows herself, distracting Stagnate to protect her dear follower Mary. That was all the time Will needed. He quickly uses his grace and fires a huge attack at Stagnate, who is forced to defend himself by firing an enormous blast himself. Blood takes advantage of this situation and jumps from behind, trying to attack him. Stagnate dodges his attack, but before he could recover, Will used his acceleration spell and rushed towards him. Stagnate tries using his magic, but Gus arrives just in time, attacking Stagnate with his own magic as well. Will stabs the god in the stomach with his sword, driving it deep inside him, and pushes him against the wall, pinning him there. Will then uses a barrage of attacks using the demon blade, alongside the grace of the goddess of light, and eliminates Stagnate once and forever. He immediately collapses on the floor with exhaustion, and the three of them rush towards him. 
asking if he's okay. Gus congratulates him and tells him that he has gotten a lot stronger. They all seem very happy at his accomplishment and Gus tells them that tonight they will celebrate, and he walks outside of the temple to get some good liquor to drink. Mary and Blood try to get up and follow him outside, but they suddenly fall back on the floor. We'll ask them if anything is wrong, but they seem to already know what is up. They tell them that because Stagnate is dead and they ended up breaking their contract by fostering Will, they are going to die. Will is shocked at this and tells them that this is not possible, and there must be a different way to deal with it. Mary and Blood tell him to stay strong and explain to him that they are really happy, as finally they will be able to enter the circle of life as it should be, and that he should not be sad about it, as they will always be watching over him, no matter what. He starts crying and tells them not to leave him as there must be a different way, but Mary tells him to not be so selfish and just be happy, as they like his smiling face. Slowly the spirits leave their bodies and they lie on the floor lifeless or will praise for them. I'm glad that they were able to enter the cycle of life once again and find happiness at last. The next day, he buries their bodies on a hilltop and creates gravestones for them, telling them that he is going to embark on a journey soon and that he will come back as often as possible to meet them. Gus approaches him from behind, asking him if he has said his farewell and Will replies that he has. He asks Gus about the reason why he is still alive, and he replies that because he didn't completely break his contract, he still has around 10 years to live before he dies, and in that time he will guard the seal of the High King. He then tosses a sack at Will, who opens it to find a bunch of treasure inside. Will is surprised by this and looks at Gus, who tells him to spend it carefully, as it took a long time for him to collect everything in that sack. Will is very grateful for the money, as he will need it once he goes forward with his journey. He returns to his room one last time, gets dressed, and readies his bag before coming back outside. Gus walks with him till the end of the road, where he says his farewell, but before going, he tells Will that he will need a last name and names him William G. Mary Blood. Will embarks upon his journey and starts traveling through a bunch of forests, killing demons and subsisting on the preserved food that he brought along the way. He seems to be very troubled by the fact that even after walking so much, there is not a single sign of any human presence around. He walks and enters what seems like an old civilization's abandoned city. The houses are all made up of stone, but are completely overgrown with moss and other plants. He walks through the town where he finds a giant crater in the ground, which he realizes is the result of a giant explosion created by very high-level magic which he suspects might have been cast by Gus himself. He walks over to the river, prays to the goddess of light, and uses his grace to free the souls of people wandering around the area so that they can return to the circle of life. He then sets camp, uses a bunch of protective charms to safeguard himself, and then prepares a fire to cook some food over it before going to sleep. The next day, he starts walking down the stream inside the jungle in the hopes of finding humans. Suddenly, he hears a rustling sound coming from the bushes, and to his surprise, a wild boar emerges from the bushes and tries to attack him, but he is quick on his feet and is able to stab the boar, killing it in a single blow. He realizes that the boar has already been hit by an arrow, which means that someone is already nearby. He looks around and spots a young man atop a boulder, holding a bow and aiming it at him. Well, thinks about what he should say as he doesn't want to fight this person. He thinks about dropping his weapons, but that could be dangerous as the archer might attack him when his defense is down. Suddenly, he realizes that the archer seems to be an elf and to make him feel more at ease, he lowers his guard and greets the archer in ancient elvish language. The archer seems taken aback by it and lowers his weapon as well. He drops down from the boulder and asks Will whether he killed the boar. Will replies that he did kill the boar and the archer, who introduces himself as Menel, tells him that the boar was supposed to be his kill, as he was chasing it for a long time and even wounded him. Will, however, claims that regardless of who wounded it, he was the one who killed it, so he thinks he deserves a portion of it. Menel agrees to it. He helps butcher the animal and then they both work together to cook the boar. Before they begin eating, Will starts praying to the goddess of light and Menel smirks at him as he doesn't seem to be a believer in God. After the food was over, Neen grabbed his stuff and was about to leave when he turned around and asked Will where he was from. Will can't tell them the truth, so he simply says that he is from the south. Menel, however, seems surprised at this and tells him that no human lives south of here and only a handful of adventurers go there. Will thinks quickly on his feet and tells him that he is one of the adventurers. Menel, however, doesn't really care and starts walking. Will stops him and asks him whether he could come alongside him, but Menel refuses, telling him not to follow at any cost. Will asks whether Menel will be alright inside the forest, and he tells Will that he doesn't need to worry about it. He uses his magic to bring forth a bunch of fireys who light up the way for him, and he disappears inside the forest. The night falls, and Will creates a campfire to have dinner before he decides to sleep. During his sleep, however, the goddess of light enters his dream and shows him some visions, in which he sees a village and Menel. He wakes up with a jolt, thinking that Menel is going to get attacked, and runs around, tracing his footsteps to warn him of the upcoming danger. He finally reaches a village and spots that a couple of humans are walking around, but he doesn't feel like anything has happened yet. Suddenly, he senses an attack coming and rushes in front of the men. He realizes that Menel is not in danger, he's the danger. 
Manuel shoots more arrows at him, but will simply block them as well. The villagers start making a bunch of noise to alert the rest of the village, while Will distracts Menel and his gang. Menel uses his fairy magic to create a bunch of disturbance beneath Will's feet, but he simply slams the ground with immense force, destroying the fairies in the area. Menel uses fire magic and throws a fiery attack towards Will, who uses his spear to slash through it before using his acceleration magic to close in the gap and hitting Menel in the stomach from the shaft of the spear, knocking him down. He then quickly captures the rest of the perpetrators by using his web magic by the time the entire village arrives. One of the villagers walks up to Will, thanks him for his service, and asks whether he is from around here. Will again simply tells him that he is an adventurer from the south and asks him what will happen to the raiders. The villager simply replies that Uni doesn't know what is going to happen. He also explains that all these people seem to be from the neighboring village and he doesn't know why they will raid this village as they are on good terms. Suddenly, the village chief appears from the crowd and thanks Will for saving the village before asking whether he will save the village again if anything happens. Will replies that he is the follower of the Goddess of Light and according to her, he has to protect every person that comes his way. The entire village seems to be asking for the perpetrators to be executed immediately, but the village elder tells them that this is not how things happen. The next day, they are all lined up and the questioning starts. The village chief asks them why they did it and Menel quickly replies that their village got destroyed by a bunch of demons and they killed almost everyone, taking all the supplies and money, leaving them with nothing. They have no other choice, so all they can do is try to raid the nearby village so they can sustain themselves. Menel, however, tells the village chief that the idea of the raid was totally his and that he should leave the other guys and only punish him however he wants. The villagers seem to be very upset at this act by the neighboring villager and demand the execution of the perpetrators. The village chief orders the hanging of Menel, but Will speaks in between, telling them not to go through with it and that he needs Menel to help him maneuver through the jungle. He then takes out the money bag that Gus gave him and tells the village chief that he can pay very handsomely for all the damages. The village chief ends up agreeing and the perpetrators get released. The chief asks Will why he did that, but Will simply replies that the demons are their true enemies and they should avoid killing each other for small problems. Menel thanks him for saving him and starts guiding him towards a new village, where Will has no idea what he is going to witness. That's it for this video, make sure to like and subscribe for part 2, and watch this next video on screen.